In 2015, I was a top 50 finalist for the Global Teacher Prize, and my life was forever changed by discovering how invaluable it is for teachers to lift each other up, to compete against ourselves, not each other, and to recognize that with great teacher power comes great teacher responsibility. So now it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to start welcoming some guests whose stories of empowerment are ones we can all relate to. These stories aren't specific to any one country, a single culture, or even a single school. They're about educators making change that started with the simplest of actions. So I'm really excited to welcome two very good friends to start things off. Dr. Nadia Lopez is a former principal, respected author, a visionary role model, and she's also a parent, which I think is a really important thing to know about Nadia as we talk to her. She joins us today from Brooklyn, New York, and she is the brilliance behind the Elevate Ed initiative. Nadia was a Global Teacher Prize in 2016 and is a super dear friend, so I'm really glad that she's joining us. Also joining us in this segment is Jim Toscano, who we all, of course, know from the Empower Ed Initiative. He is an ed tech mentor, a teacher, a strategic thinker, and a champion for others. He's the reason we've all come together as a community connection through Empower Ed. And Jim was a Global Teacher Prize finalist in 2017. I have one more thing I wanna say about these awesome people. They are both driven by purpose and never by ego. They're into curating opportunities for colleagues to connect and recognize potential. And I should also say they are among the most special colleagues I have made and connections I've made on my global education journey. So I can't tell you how exciting it is for the three of us to share this time with all of you. So I have some questions for you too. And we of course know each other really well. And we've had a lot of time uh, together driving in a car between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. I think getting lost once or twice between Dubai and Abu Dhabi um, and having text message exchanges when we're not even sure what time of day or night it is for the other two. Um, I want to start by you know, recognizing Elevate Ed and Empower Ed as two uh, really successful initiatives that have brought teachers together. So. The first question that I think we would all like to uh, to hear an answer to and, and to get to know a little bit about is what inspired you to start that platform for other educators? Nadia, can you talk to us uh, first? And I noticed the paintings behind you and they're fantastic. Thank you. Um, I did, I, I started Elevated simply because I felt that there wasn't anyone really making sure that um, social, emotionally, mentally, um, I was okay, especially as a leader. I found that we spend so much time making sure that children are okay. Um, and as a leader, I made sure that my staff was okay, but I didn't see where there was intentionality about making sure wellness, personal development and sustainability was at the forefront. Um, and so when I thought about there being this gap, I just figured, you know, I might as well create it myself and elevate it just simply is aspiring for everyone to learn so that this way they can um, and learn the things that you need in order to be better for yourself, lead others so that they can be better and then leverage your relationships so that you can be best for your community. And so the idea is that you're taking yourself to a higher level so that this way you can be the best in everything that you want to do. It's, it's interesting because as you described that, what I, I heard as the most as a really key point is that you didn't see the solution that you needed. Mm -hmm. And so instead of waiting for it or going on an eternal hunt to find it, you started to create it for yourself, knowing that you're not alone in that pursuit, that there's other people looking for that. Exactly. You that's, that's a really key part. And I think that it's also the problem that I see a lot is that we are shamed in saying that we need help. We are shamed in saying that um, we, we need to focus on ourselves because we're supposed to be about our profession. And I love education and I love all the things that comes with it. it. It allows you to empower others, right? But if you're not being taken care of, if you're not um, the one putting yourself first, then you compromise the possibilities of helping children so that you know they can have a brighter future so that's yeah. how I created it that's that's it's exciting to hear how that you know how your work came to be and what your thinking is because that's that's the hard part we we see the work but we don't always know what that 
thought process is connected to it. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. So Jim, I want to ask you the same question. You know, what inspired you to uh, to to make Empower Ed happen? You know, on multiple platforms and through podcasts and through uh, and th these live sessions. Where did this all stem from? Um, with all honesty, it's really through Global Teacher Prize. Um, the moment I became part of the global community, I was amazed, inspired by a lot of teacher stories from the different parts of the world. I mean, like reading the story of your story, like Mark and uh, Nadia and everyone, uh, it's been really, really like, you know, um, if you want to understand more about the challenges and opportunities of being a teacher, then you have to make sure that you um, read, listen to the te to the real stories on the ground level. And I felt like in the Philippines, I've never heard much stories about teachers. I mean, like, you know, you have stories of teachers being in the media just because he went viral, right? But... I want to dig deeper because I want to find the more genuine stories so that we can have real talk. I mean, like, um, real, re, uh, the, uh, having real talk is something that I've learned from people like you. Nadia, for example, she's very, very courageous and brave in facing those, you know, challenges and issues. I remember asking Nadia one time, I, I don't know, Nadia, if you can remember this, but I asked Nadia how does she manage to you know, talk about issues while being part of that system, right? Which literally has the, a lot of issues. I mean, like the education systems around the world have their own issues. And I'm like, Nadia, how do you distance yourself? You know, be a very objective person, have a very objective perspective, but then in the end, still recognize that you are part of that system. I mean, I got inspired by Nadia's Elevated. There are a lot of, of stories or platforms out there, and I just want to have something like for the Filipino teacher. Um, um, I, I yeah. think it's interesting, Jim, as you talk about stories of Filipino teachers, because you know, uh, a year ago in June 2019, there was an episode of MMK about our friend Ryan, who's a teacher in uh, in Bicol, and you know, it, it's. It's interesting to know that a teacher's story was dramatized in that way. And wouldn't it be so interesting if there was an MMK spinoff uh, all around the world that would tell the stories of teachers, you know, in the context of their community, going and, and following and seeing that path of commitment that they've that they pursue. Um, I think, you know, for for both of you, and I'm going to ask Jim to answer this question first, what has been, you know, the, the biggest success um, or the biggest challenge when you started the platform, not as you've gone through it, but so that people can can recognize that that first hurdle is not the one to stop at, but to get over it because it can only get easier and get better. So what was that success or that challenge that, um, that you faced right at the very beginning? Um, again, something that I learned from Nadia, and I, I, I'm just really saying this because I love her and I've learned a lot from her, she's a mentor. It's starting with a vision. I always uh, look at Nadia's, you know, the vision board and everything. And it's something that I've learned from her. Starting with this platform, the first thing that I had in mind was what really is my vision? Because I want to anchor myself on a very, very concrete why, right? Why am I starting this? And, you know, I've been trained. So I'm a philosophy graduate. So I've been, I've been trained to always ask why. And, you know, that's my life experience. If I don't do things um, solidly, you know, concrete uh, why, if there's no vision behind it, and then I, what happens is that, you know, it's just a fad for me. I just uh, do a podcast because everyone's doing a podcast. I want to have a YouTube channel because everyone's doing a YouTube channel, but I don't want that thing to happen. So I always, I started with, uh, I look at the vision of everyone. I mean, like, I look at Nadia's vision, I look at other people's vision and how they craft it. Um, I read Simon Sinek's uh, golden circle mm -hmm. those kinds of readings help me understand more of what i really wanted to do so the biggest challenge there is you know cl clarifying your why and not being pressured to go to scale it up you know in a very very quick manner rapid manner because you know the higher you are the harder you fall afterwards so yeah. you know taking time taking time to grow i mean organically well and that that very uh focused sense of purpose is what you've described. And, and I would say looking at 
uh, the podcast is one way to reach people. Um, you know, you can't be staring at a screen when you're um, on a hobble hobble or a tricycle or walking or or in your grab on your way to school, but a podcast you, you can have in your ears and you can be hearing. And so I, I see how you've thought about your purpose and had those different channels to connect with people in ways that's most meaningful to them. That's, that's really interesting. So Nadia, you have, of course, um, you have a number of initiatives that you've you know, undertaken, especially I've noticed in the last year or so, a really different uh, type of presence. And, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, at, at the beginning or at this moment of growth, when you expanded the different ways that you're reaching out to people, you know, I asked Jim about the beginning, but I'm going to ask you about that moment when things felt uh, ready to accelerate, ready to expand. What was that big success or that big challenge to get over to let that, you know, that next bloom and blossom moment happen? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be clear and transparent and say, um, for me, the challenge is um, self-sabotaging. You know, sometimes we face mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. So I do have a lot of initiatives. Um, and in my mind, just like Jim says, I have a vision. I have a vision. I write it down. I put it down on paper. I'll collect photos, whatever I need to do in order to put it in a place of visualizing what I want. Um, but sometimes, you know, I, I often think about it that, you know, who am I to create this? You know, maybe I'm taking on something way bigger than I should. You know, maybe there's enough things that are out there. Maybe I'm doing too much. And so um, even when I went with um, to the Philippines to speak, you know, um, to keynote at, at the event that Jim had at Xavier. Um, I'm surrounded by people and I feel like I'm definitely in a tribe, but part of me was like, oh my God, I'm in the Philippines. I'm, I've been asked to do a keynote. Like, how did I even get here? You know, I'm, I'm a principal, yes, but I'm a principal all the way in Brooklyn, New York. And, you know, I have children who are some of the poorest in the world. And, and yet there's something about my story and something that Jim saw in me to invite me to be amongst his peers and to speak to leaders. And so I had to literally talk to myself and say, you deserve to be here. There's something that connects you more far greater than what you think you don't have. You're an educator, you care about children. You're here to talk to other people who, you know, want to see and know that there is hope. And, 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 and so when I did that and then I got to Xavier and everyone was so kind and nice, I was able to dispel my own myths in my head. Um, and so I think that a lot of us do that. A lot of us sometimes believe that we're not worthy, um, that, you know, what we dream of, sometimes we don't even get the su support that we need, right? Because... Oftentimes people would say to me, you know, you're a principal, just be the principal. You don't have to do anything else. And then, you know, when I thought about um, leaving my school, the first question was like, but what are you going to do if you're not a principal? And so all of those things I had to contemplate, but then it went back to elevate it. How am I helping others with their personal development? How am I helping them understand the importance of wellness? And so when I was grounded in my mission and my vision, it helped me to realize that I'm doing what I've been purposed in life to do um, and empower others to see that there are other ways of, you know, still educating. Um, but I still love what I do and still support my school just in a different way. Yeah. And I think it's uh, it's interesting when I, I you know when I hear you just say the word elevate. You know, I immediately get this image in my mind of you being, you taking others, lifting them up with you, um, you know, above the craziness, above the busyness, above all of the, the policy, the politics, the challenges, to just get that perspective from above it all to say, you know, what are we here for? Who are we here to support and serve? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a form of servant leadership that is, um, you know, incredibly valuable 
Um, it's certainly, uh, you know, the, one of the, the big trends in education is to be thinking about how do I give to others while leading them at the same time, you know, providing both of those at once. And I, so I think that's, that's really, um, it's really special how you've pieced those things together and how you've been honest about your purpose and your drive. Um, you know, I, I want to ask each of you about, um, you know, why it is that we all need to empower or elevate ourselves as teachers, you know, as educators in our communities. You've answered a little bit about that, but I'd like you to talk about how teachers can do this, how they can get started. You know, it's one thing for us, for any of the three of us to talk about, you know, where where we are and in our progress and, and development. But I can think for myself of a moment last summer I was visiting Ryan home in, in San Jose and, you know, outlying barangay outside of Dunsol. And, you know, it got a little bit late. And I said, how, how will I get back into town? And he said, okay, well, you're going to go on a hubble hubble. Well, I have never ridden a motorcycle until that moment when I in shorts and a t-shirt and slides. I mean, I was not prepared to be on a motorcycle for 45 minutes back into town. But as I, you know, we got on and we went over the hanging bridge out of the, out of the, the village, you start to realize uh, this is what it means to jump into something and to trust someone with you. I wasn't driving, thank goodness, but <laughs> trust someone with you and, and to go on this adventure because you know that it will get you to where you need to be. But much like that moment for me, how, what kind of advice would you offer to the people who are joining us today about how, how they can actually get started with their own initiative, that, that, that feeling of empowerment and elevation in our profession? Me or Jim? Nadia, why don't you go first? <laughs> well, you know, I, I believe in God and I believe that you have to start with your faith. Um, and trusting that if you have an idea and you have a vision that it was given to you by your creator. And so that's why I always write everything down because in a, in a back at 2-2, it says, write it down and make it plain, right? And so you have to trust and believe that there was a seed planted within you. Um, and when you put it into existence, everything that you need will come, you know, whether it is the support, the mentor, the resources, all of those things will seem to come together in a way that you didn't even think was possible, right? Um, and it's all about surrounding yourself with the right people. So for instance, when I think of um, my support network, I would say Mark and Jim are two of those individuals, right? That I can lean on, that they will check in on me um, and we will check in on each other. And like Mark said, it could be 1 a.m. my time, 1 p.m. Jim's time, but then it's like, what time is it? Like 10 a.m., 10 p.m. your time or something like that. Like, it's just, it doesn't matter. We just know we have each other. And so you have to take inventory of who are the people who you surround yourself with um, because there are people who are good and have good intentions, but just don't know how to provide you with the support you need. And then there are people who have, don't have good intentions, right? And so that's energy and the transference of energy. You need to make sure you are surrounded with positive energy. So writing your vision down, maintaining your faith and knowing your creator, and then surrounding yourself with positive people. Yeah. You know, get yourself a good thick journal and write down your plans. Yeah. You know, it's, it, there, it's, it's no wonder that we're going to hear from, uh, from a, a well-respected um, uh, professor of education who specializes in literacy a little bit later. This, this is all coming together, this idea of writing it down. Thanks, Nadia. So Jim, what about you? What is that, that thing to do to get started? Again, I will always go back to writing the vision. I think that's one thing that I really appreciated. And um, coming from my own personal experience, it's about also breaking free from, I mean, like, you know, in the, my, my own experience is like, I always listen to what other people would say, right? As a, as an, as a teacher in the Philippines, sometimes you feel like you will always you're always asked to follow a certain school leader, a certain policy or whatever. Sometimes you just need to tell yourself that, you know, I want to break free from these things and I want to do what I want to do. I mean, like, you, sometimes you, have, you need to have the courage, you need to find that, you have, the, you have to have that kind of push 
And yeah, sometimes it might not start within you because sometimes you feel, you know, scared about it, not sure. So I always love to hear stories from other people, like what Nadia has mentioned, surrounding yourself with the people who should be inspiring you. I mean, I even tell my students, like, don't waste your time staying with people, being friends with people who will not, you know, be good with you or might not influence you to become a better person. That's something that I always tell my students, and I think I, that's something that I want to share. Don't waste your time being, you know, acting like a cool person and doing this because everyone's doing it. Um, start to live your own truth. I mean, I, I'm amazed I'm saying this, but these things are not something that came from me. It's something that I've heard from everyone, from you, Mark, from, from Nadia, from our friends in Global Teacher Press. I mean, like everyone's saying, live your own truth. You will never, never hear that in the Philippines because, you know, we treasure, you know, following people and all those kinds of things. Sometimes it's really, really good to break free from whatever people will tell you to do. Yeah. yeah. It is so exciting to, to have this time with both of you um, <laughs> on screen together. And, and you know, as we start to wrap up this segment, which kind of brings a bit of a tear to my eye that we might have to wrap this up. Um, <laughs> We're going to end each of the segments today with a special question, and I'm going to invite the audience as well to answer this question in the comments. Post a comment and, and tell us what you know what your perspective is, what you're thinking wherever you are. So this final question will go to you first with this, Nadia, and uh, Nadia doesn't know this is coming, so it's this is going to be all very fresh and very wow. honest and true. <laughs> so Nadia, who empowered you? Who is that person who helped you see how much power you possess? My mom, um, my mama, everybody knows Mama Love, they follow me. She um, empowered me to know that I was significant and great um, and that I was special. And, um, and she made sure that I understood the importance of surrounding yourself with the right people, being in the right places and always showing up as your best as the best version of yourself. So my mom. Uh. <laughs> okay, all right, Jim, what about you? Who, who has empowered you? Who's that person who helped you see just how much power lies within? Um, it's always about the family, I think, right? You know, um, I grew up in a family, we don't have that much. I mean, we have something to live by every day, daily. I mean, like, but they were, uh, my parents were the ones who taught me, like, to have a very, very high ambition. And, you know, I still remember one of, the, I don't think they know this, but one reason why I didn't go to my, to the high school where my mother is teaching, because I don't want to study in her school. But I made that very first decision in my life, and they supported me. I mean, like, that was the first decision. I mean, I, it's, Sometimes I, when I think about it, it's just so funny. It's just because I don't want to be in the same school with my mother because <laughs> I don't want that kind of pressure. But, you know, when I made that decision, that was the first time that they really supported me. So I, I feel like that kind of empowerment, you make your own decision, but at the same time, you have people who will support you, like, to move forward and help you be better. And can I just take this opportunity you guys are part of those people who have been pushing me, like supportive all the way. Dr. Nadia, Mark, I mean, like you, you've traveled to the Philippines. <laughs> you've traveled to the Philippines and I feel like those are the great moments that we have together. So there. Yeah, and you know, it's it's interesting. I think Nadia would say the same thing that the journey of getting to the Philippines is much more than flying on a plane. You know, it's it's about the connection and the the relationships that are made, not just with you, but with also the school community around you, the the colleagues um, that uh, that are connected to your community as a teacher. I think it's really really exciting uh, for us both to know that we have been to your school, that we have been in your community, and uh, and we've had a chance to go and see. Uh, so many beautiful places uh, in the Philippines, whether it was landing around the Mayon at uh, 6.30 in the morning, or if it was Nadia's very long drive through heavy traffic to get out to uh, to see some beautiful beaches, you know, and, and Dust Marinas, I think that's where you went, Jim. 
Um, but it's it's exciting to know that that through all of that, here we are today sharing these stories and hearing from each of you. We're in three different time zones. Uh, we're in you know three different totally parts of the world and and uh, and with three different stories to tell that all come together. So thank you very much to both of you uh, for being a part of this segment. And and I, I just want to sort of you know put out there, point out, you know, Nadia and Jim are great examples of what happens when teachers discover the depth of their own influence matched with their responsibility and that sense of community that exists in education. You know, I've spent hours talking to both of them over the past few years, and I still continue to discover how brilliant they are. There's new ideas, there's new perspectives, you know, there's there's even times where we've gone back to rethink things we've discussed before to make sure that we're really thinking, you know, in a progressive way and thinking about new ways to, to make, keep making everything better. So thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Um, and I'm, I'm sad to see you go from the screen, but I know we have some more fantastic guests to join us here in just a moment. So thank you to both of you and we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye Mark. Bye, Bye. Nadine. Bye. Thank you.